Purpose. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and uh, I, I would make a few observations with respect to this motion that has been put forward by Mr. Green. Uh, first of all, this motion is not unique to this committee. Uh, this is part of a coordinated campaign between the Liberal government and their NDP coalition partner in which, once again, the NDP is doing the bidding of the Liberals. We have a Prime Minister and a government that are in chaos, a government that is 20 points behind in the polls, a Prime Minister who is literally despised by Canadians, uh, a government that has managed to screw up just about everything that they have touched over the past nine years from uh, record deficits and debt that has led to 40-year high inflation, to uh, high interest rates that have all created a cost of living crisis to which these Liberals' response to the cost of living crisis that they created is to make life even less affordable for Canadians with uh, carbon tax hikes and now this latest tax hike on health care workers, specifically doctors, farmers, small businesses, and homeowners that they, uh, home builders that they claim is a tax hike on the so-called super rich when in fact every day Canadians are going to pay and pay dearly as a result. And on top of that, we have a government that is mired in scandal. Um, in fact, it is arguable that this is the most corrupt government in modern Canadian history. And uh, I saw one Liberal member uh, thought that, uh, thinks it's funny, but uh, we have Dominic LeBlanc found guilty of breaching the Conflict of Interest Act. He's a senior minister in this government. We have Mary Ng, who's found guilty of breaching the Conflict of Interest Act. She's a senior minister in this government. We have Bill Morneau, who's found guilty of breaching multiple sections of the Conflict of Interest Act. He was the finance minister in this government. We have a former member of this committee, if you can believe it, who was found guilty, a liberal member, who was found guilty of violating the Conflict of Interest Act. And then we have the Prime Minister himself, the first Prime Minister in Canadian history to be found guilty of violating the Conflict of Interest Act. And he was found guilty not once, but twice. And so, and now we have the minister from Edmonton, Mr. Boissonneau, who has so much to answer for, and I'm going to get into that momentarily. But we have a government that has a history of entitlement, patronage, and straight-up corruption. It's a, there is a culture of corruption embedded within this government that's just established based upon the nine-year history of these Liberals. So in the face of all of these failings and all of the scandals and how frustrated and angry Canadians are at these Liberals, it's no wonder that they want to get out of town. They want to hide over the summer. They want to shut down the ability of parliamentary committees to provide appropriate oversight and I'm not going to be a party to doing any of the bidding for these Liberals. Uh, there is a reason why we have three oversight committees that are chaired by 
the, the official opposition, government operations committee, public accounts, and the ethics committee. And boy, all of these committees are working overtime in the face of all of the mismanagement and all of these liberal scandals. And to say, well, simply bring forward a 1064, I say not good enough. Not good enough, because we've seen the NDP uh, work with the Liberals to adjourn meetings to prevent 1064 motions from being debated and voted on. Uh, so what is the rationale for this motion? They're, they're, the, the only rationale that I can see is that it's about doing the bidding for Justin Trudeau and the Liberals. Uh, there is a reason why, in the standing orders, the chair has the discretion to convene a meeting. I say, leave it to the chair of this committee, a very good chair. And we have, and I do want to zero in on the, the matter that we were discussing earlier today, and that is the cloud of scandal that hangs over the Minister of Employment, Mr. Boissonneau. Uh, yes, we are going to hopefully, hopefully hear from his former business partners, uh, Ms. Poon and Mr. Anderson, but I would submit that we can't wait until the fall before there is any further scrutiny undertaken by this committee of Mr. Boissano and the series of questionable uh, activities that he has uh, been connected with in relation to both Ms. Poon and Mr. Anderson. Uh, let's look at what we're dealing with with Mr. Boissano. We have a minister who had started up a company, a lobbying firm, after he lost his seat in the 2019 election. He got around, he, there was a loophole uh, that allowed him to set up a company, even though he couldn't lobby, and he hired Ms. Poon, who lobbied on for, for his company. When he was returned to the House of Commons in 2021, uh, he appropriately wound down that company. Uh, Ms. Poon took over, but Ms. Poon then set up her own lobbying firm that was lobbying this government, that was lobbying Minister Boissonneau's own department, and that had received $110 million in government contracts as Ms. Poon's company was paying Mr. Boissonneau. Mr. Boissonneau was not transparent. In fact, he attempted to hide his connection to Ms. Poon's lobbying firm by, in, in the declaration that he made to the Ethics Commissioner in which he hid behind the numbered company, not the name that the company or the lobbying for the company held itself out as. As a result, the ethics commissioner was unaware that the firm that was paying Mr. Boissano was lobbying his department and other departments within this government and securing contracts. Uh, Mr. Boissano said, well, there's nothing to see here because the payments that he was receiving from Ms. Foon, Ms. Poon's lobbying company were in relation to accounts receivable from work that he did 
prior to his election, except for the fact that he never did any work for Ms. Poon's company. So why is he being paid by Ms. Poon's company, a company he did no work for, a company that was lobbying his department that was in, in, uh, that was benefiting handsomely in securing $110 million in contracts. Mr. Boissonneau has provided no explanation for why he was being paid by Ms. Poon's company. It doesn't add up. We need to probe that. We, are. we also, we also need to uh, understand why it is that, you know, Mr. Mr. Boisno hid behind a numbered company. Why was he not transparent? Was it, was it just a, a sloppiness on his part? Now, he says that he was cleared by the Ethics Commissioner. He hasn't been cleared by the Ethics Commissioner. And, he, and when he was asked about whether he's been cleared by the Lobbying Commissioner, as far as I understand, the lob it's on the Lobbying Commissioner's radar, this, this issue. So um, there are many questions to be asked of, of Mr. Boissonneau uh, in regards to what is, at the very least, a very questionable arrangement of, of having one's business partner lobby uh, the department of that, the minister who's connected to that, uh, that individual who's getting, who's being paid by that company as that company is securing money from the federal government for clients. But then there is the issue around Global Health Imports Corporation and the question of where is Randy? Who is Randy? This is a company that Mr. Boissonneau set up just at the beginning of the pandemic. He had no experience in the PPE business, neither did Mr. Anderson, whose career was that of a hockey coach. <laughs> but amazingly, they set up this company right at the time of the pandemic and began to secure millions of dollars in government contracts for PPE raises some questions about how they managed to pull that off. Uh, experts uh, and those familiar with the industry said that it, it's almost impossible for essentially a two-person company with no track record, no experience, to suddenly start up a company and secure millions of dollars in, in this area. But I digress. Needless to say, all has not gone well at Global Health Imports Corporation. Uh, Mr. Boissonneau held himself out, as he confirmed when he appeared before this committee, as a business, as, one, as a partner at Global Health Imports with Mr. Anderson. Uh, Global Health Imports did not appear well, I shouldn't say didn't appear because there were judgments to back it up, uh, did not operate as, uh, you know, uh, as, a, as a good business, an ethical business. This is a, a company that has been hit with $7.8 million in judgments by Alberta courts for ripping off clients. $7.8 million in judgments by Alberta courts in respect of a company that Mr. Boissonneau started, was held himself out as a partner at, and continues to have a 50% ownership in. Now, what does that say, before getting into what, what the real, what 
the bigger issue is uh, involving Mr. Boissonneau, just 